All right, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, it is time for, well, what time? You know what time it is. You know what time it is. It's time to get ill. It's time to stop collaborating and listen. It's hammer time. Oh, man. It's getting kind of hectic. <laughs> it's getting. All those music rem- references reminded me. So the other day, I actually started playing the Guardians of the Galaxy game. Guardians of the Galaxy game. Are you familiar with it at all? No. Do you know I'm that it existed? It at all. It, it, I, f- I feel like you should play it just because, A, you like the Guardians of the Galaxy. It's not Chris Pratt, but it's close enough. Mm-hmm. And the soundtrack, I'm like an hour and a half in. I think you would you would be into it just for the soundtrack. Oh, okay. Because it, it is totally your your freaking your jam. Speaking of soundtracks. Speaking of soundtracks. Oh, uh, I rediscovered that I shouldn't be yawning on the radio. All right, so uh, I hit the I hit the the button. Hey, did you hit your button? Oh uh, yeah. Oh, I mean, I hit my button because you were getting ready to talk. Yeah, but uh, uh, on Peacock, the Peacock app. Yeah, they have Miami Vice reruns. Oh wow! Yeah, and they're they're not digitally remastered. It's the original, like made for squishy screen TV version. Four by three. Yeah. So instead of the so there's 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 black bars on the outside of the screen. Yeah. On my on my good TV. <laughs> Which is as it should be because like they tried to do that with the Simpsons and it, it messed up a lot of the. The visual gags because stuff was yeah. like cut out of the edges. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm watching Miami Vice, and it, and I realized not that I didn't know this back in the '80s when it came out, but one of the draws of the show was that they licensed all the popular music at the time. Yeah. Oh, uh, and so and and almost to a fault because they 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 wrote scenes. Where you could tell they wrote the scene just so that 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 music clip would work, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> they, they they were like, "We're paying for this license. We're going to use it. Damn it!" Yeah, we're paying for this. We're going to use it. That's that's the end of that story. So, anyway, uh, the reason I started watching that was because I am so sick and fed up to my freaking chin with modern television, and it's it's. Psyop woke messages. Um, if it's not the gay agenda, it's the it's the liberal climate change agenda. It's the green energy agenda. It's the whatever the the white men are and white Christian men are all evil and racist. But everyone else in the world is a perfect human, and I'm I'm I just can't do it. Just tell me a story. Just tell me a freaking story. I, that's all. I'm here for a story. I don't want your woke lesson. I don't want your. And you know what it's like. What is it like? Uh, it, it's in. It's it's act. It's 100 straight out of the Soviet Marxist Leninist playbook. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm 144 pages into the 700 page uh, gu- Gulag Archipelago. Yeah. And brother, I know why they don't they don't want people to read that book anymore because they're doing today what was done in the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s in the Soviet Union, uh, and it's being done today. They're like, well, we can't we can't make let people know that that's actually the communist playbook, and so we'll just. We'll just discourage people from reading it. And you know what's sad, Zach? What is sad? Is I, I believe that even if we were to encourage people to read that book, that book is too advanced for the modern human. I think I think the modern human couldn't get through it. Consume it. Yeah. I don't think they could get through it. Like I said, I'm only like 140 pages into it. Um uh, and it takes me a long time because I read it with a pencil and a highlighter. And so I'm literally highlighting and taking notes on almost every single page. Oh, there you go. Oh, but, um, Did I tell you a little, uh, just speaking of taking notes, I think you can see it right there. Mm-hmm. I got a little desk whiteboard so that I can take notes and stuff as, well, as I go through the day. That's good. Yeah. 
And that'll that be easy for me to remember stuff. So you can remember stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Speaking of remembering stuff, uh, we're going to have to remember people to watch the, the Brownells video or the teaser or whatever. So let's go ahead and play the actual video and then move on. Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, proudly brought to you from the SDS Import Studio. If you want quality that's affordable, visit sdsimports.com. We don't just talk guns and gear, we also discuss current events and politics, because guns are politics. Now sit back and listen louder to your co-host, CEO of Full 30, Jared Markle, and your beloved host, the pimp hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. All right. Yes, indeed. Indeed, yes. All right. So, first things first, if you are in the Discord channel and you're watching live and you want to ask a question, go ahead and ask it. Zach will pay attention to it. He will monitor it. I will not be monitoring it because every time I go over there, I get distracted. So, I will be monitoring the show notes. That's what I will be doing. Uh, and and also, uh, Jared is not here, so it's going to be Zach's thing. Ah, hmm. You guys want to just jump into the Duracoat? Well, you can just jump into the Duracoat if you want. I don't mind. Okay. All right. Jump into the Duracoat thing. Should you or should you not take the advice of the galactically stupid? (laughs) Oh, <laughs> uh, what I've got right here is I have my Glock 17 and it was my first attempt at a, a tiger stripage. Uh, it's got a desert kind of a desert tan uh, color. It's got the uh, the green. And then if you look really close, I don't know if you can see it. There's little highlights of gray. There's little gray highlights in there. Kind of hard to see. So, obviously, it's Duracoated. This is a real, genuine firearm, and I just whipped it out of my reckoning. I'm going to whip it back into my reckoning holster here. Uh, So, the question is, should you Duracoat a carry gun? And some people will tell you, no, absolutely not, never. And you say, okay, why? Well, you can Duracoat it, but only in in a single flat color. Like what color? Like black or or green or flat dark earth. Okay. So this is this is the logic of, of humans in our modern world. I should never have a colored gun because it looks like a toy. Yeah, that's correct. Well, what about the, the FDE ones that Glock sells? Well, those are okay. Why? Well, because it comes from the manufacturer that way. Yeah, but but I'm the one who buying it and carrying it. Yeah, but I mean it, it's okay because it because it, they made it like that. So it's okay for the manufacturer to put a color on it, but it's not okay for me to put a color on it. That's what you're saying. Well, I mean it lo- makes it look like a toy. Okay, but I'm an adult human and I'm going to use it like a real gun. Who cares if it looks like a toy? Well, but but children will see it and they'll be attracted to like all right, now now we just fell off the cliff like Thelma and Louise were like <whistles> into the Grand Canyon. So you'll have people that are like, "Oh, cuz it just cuz it'll be attractive to children." So that's why we should make Tide Pods an ugly brown color so that that they don't look like candy so the children won't eat them. I know it's a live gun. I I understand that it's a live, real gun. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat it like a real, live gun. I am going to keep it out of reach of small children, and I'm going to carry it, and I'm going to exercise. I'm going to use. I don't get that. But we, we literally, every time we put a picture of a Duracoated gun with a cool finish, like a camouflage finish or whatever, or using different colors, more than one person will jump in and say, oh, you should never do that. It looks like a toy, and, and it'll be attractive to children. 
Okay, Democrat liberal. I'm not a Democrat liberal. You talk just like them. Those are the same artards. I can say retard. Those are the same retards that do you guys remember that? The it looks like a it looks like candy. They were trying to pass legislation to force Tide to change the color of Tide Pods to something muted and ugly, make them look like dog turds or something so kids wouldn't want to eat them. Um, because that's when we were pretending. That's back when we were, we were doing the great pretending that it was toddlers who were eating the Tide Pods, not millennial Gen Z teenagers. Yeah. It looks like candy. That didn't age very well. And... Uh, and that didn't go anywhere. That that idiocy, fortunately, didn't go anywhere because we were we were in the getting supplies last weekend, and the and Tide Pods are still bright colors because nobody wants to buy laundry detergent that's like a muted brown and looks like a dog turd. Okay. Uh, so when it comes to colors, you say, "All right, well, forget the colors. Is there a a benefit?" in Duracoating a carry gun. Well, yeah, actually, there is. Uh, depending on which gun you have. Now, there are some guns, and I'm going to go ahead and, and tip my cap to Glock. Uh, Glock, the Glock Tenefer finish on their slides, which apparently Tenefer is so toxic in the factory that they can't do it in the United States of America. <laughs> um. But it's it's hundred percent rust proof, rust proof, rust free, right? Uh, I'll give you a great example. When I was working as a bodyguard many many moons ago, our client uh, had a two hundred and ten foot boat <laughs> with a helicopter pad. So, and and on that boat we had three types of firearms for the security team. We had Car fifteens. We had Glock 17s, and we had Remington 1187 semi-auto shotguns. And the only ones that didn't rust were the Glocks. Because you're on a boat out in the salt water where there's salt air around you all the time. So the, the Car 15 and the, the Remington was the worst. Uh, cause I'm sure they put the cheapest finish on and it was like, it's a blue finish or whatever that required the Remington shotguns required constant maintenance. Uh, all the parts on the car 15s that were not aluminum. And obviously the upper receiver, the lower receivers, aluminum, you know, the, the grips, the, the, their polymer, but the steel parts, you had to, you had to pay close attention to the steel parts. Cause if you didn't, they would turn orange like after a couple days. Uh, but the Glocks never. Zero. There's zero rust on the clocks. So if you got a Glock and you're carrying it every day, it's probably not going to rust. Even if you're carrying it like pressed against your body, it's probably not going to rust. There aren't too many companies that can say that. You say, oh, I bought a stainless steel gun. It's silver, stainless steel. It won't rust. Stainless steel rust. No, it doesn't. Shut your whore mouth. No, actually, <laughs> actually, it will. It'll. It takes much longer. It it takes a lot longer for a stainless gun to get rust spots on it than a blue steel gun. That is true, uh, but your silver stainless gun can rust. Um, in nickel guns, can rust. Uh, it takes a lot longer, uh, but they can. Are, so, are there any guns that don't rust? Like anything that's like manufactured and it will not rust? Yeah, clock. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> uh, that other company, that other company, the C company, that everybody likes to say, "Oh, our 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 guns are C coated in the in the factory." Uh, that that crap wears off like within a year. Uh, within it, Jared has one. He he has one of the original TP nines, the the TP nine S eight, with with a brown C coat on it, 
and it has wear stripes all over it. It has wear wear marks and wear stripes all over it where the where the Cerakote has come off. Uh, if you're going to carry a gun close to your body, if you live in an environment that's that's very humid, like the South uh, or around an ocean or whatever, it might be a good idea to Duracoat your carry gun. Uh, and and if you are, if if you actually take your gun out of the holster once in a while and examine it and clean all the lint and crap out of it, you might notice that uh, it, it's fine. It, it's fine. Uh, you don't have to pull that out. Um, and that actually brings me up to a good point, Zach. Remember when we did the uh, we have an interview with Steve Lauer in our archives i believe you but i do not remember it no we did well we did it in in uh, biloxi mm-hmm. when you were not involved in the production of the radio that explains why i don't remember it what we're going to do is we're going to release that as a special special bonus episode mm-hmm. uh for everyone to listen to but uh and i had that thought about that yesterday anyway take a good look at your carry gun uh, if you're if you're noticing orange spots um, appearing on your carry gun because you're carrying it against your body, uh, you might want to. And you know, I'm not telling you you have to do a super cool camouflage pattern in multiple colors. Just get a can of slightly darker black, and you know, do that. So, uh, yeah, there is there is a reason why you you should and could uh, dur coat your carry gun. Uh, just it just keeps the. A lot of people, we get so focused on the cool colors that we forget the reason that we coat the steel is so it doesn't corrode. <laughs> we coat the steels to protect it, protect it against salt and sweat and, and you know, cor- basically general corrosion. Uh, we, we forget about that. We focus so much on the cool colors that we forget about the practical aspect of it. So there you go. If you would like to be a Duracoat master finisher, you can go to studentofthegun.com slash Duracoat and uh, well go from there you can be a master finisher and put some ducats in your pocket and who doesn't love some good old ducats that's right you put some republic credits in your pocket all right sotggiveaway.com sotggiveaway.com is where you go to win free guns, to win a gun. You want to win a gun? I want to win a gun. All right. If you go there, uh, you have, according to this, uh, eight days, 23 hours, 29 minutes to sign up for the March giveaway. It's a semi-auto shotgun. Looks kind of like an AR. It's magazine fed. Uh, It's called the TAR-12P, and it comes with, they're going to throw in a bonus 20-round drum magazine for you freaks. So get on it. Be there or be square. Thank you to our buddies at SDS Imports for setting that up. All right. And uh, I I don't know what else to say about. Oh, I saw a sneak peek of the high point yeet cannon, the YC yeet cannon. Yeah. Uh, And. Oh, uh, our next public trade show. So this is this is hot off the press. Uh, <clears throat> after the shot show in January, we displayed at the Great American Outdoor Show in Harrisburg. It was awesome to see everyone who stopped by to say hello. Our next public show, where we will be featuring the YC nine nine millimeter threaded barrel new and improved handgun, will be the NRA annual meeting in Houston. Mm. And they they it's weird because annual meeting is usually the last weekend of April or the first weekend of May. This week or this time, it's going to be May 27th to the 29th. So it's it's at the end of May, which is unusual. And I'm sure it's because of scheduling uh, scheduling issues. Uh, and you say, why are they going back to Houston? Because they were going to be in Houston and they canceled it, remember? Yeah. So they already have a deposit there. I'm sure they're like, well, we're not going to refund your money, but we'll hold another date for you in the future. So that's that, Mr. That's that. I couldn't have so, done it in Amarillo. Because it's not big enough. Boo. Amarillo can't. 
Well, I don't You're know. About um, ten hours faster. As as pissed off as people are about um, the NRA, they might not need a very big building anymore. Exactly. And it, mm. if we wanted to go, it would take about <clears throat> ten hours less driving. Yeah, because Houston's all the way on the other side of the state. Yep, it's like right down there by the Gulf. Yeah. So even Dallas was a long drive, and that's gonna that's even longer. And I'm not getting on a plane like a bunch of slaves. Yeah, I know. I, I didn't. I didn't happening. even tend to. I wasn't even thinking about a plane. I was. I looked up driving this uh, direction. Yeah, I'm like no, that's out of the question. Out of the question. All right. So cat in the hat and that be that. That's a little bit of news. If you want to see the new YC nine, it's going to be on display at the Hell NRA yeah. annual meeting in Houston, the 27th to the 29th. There you go. All right. New listeners. And I know there's some of you out there. Pay attention. Attention new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called seven training tips that could save your life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. Uh, That's what you should do. That's what you should do. Uh, go to studentofthegun.com for everything studentofthegun.com. And, oh, man, are, are you familiar with the, uh, the, the, the I hate Harry's.com? I have no idea what that is. Please inform so, me. So uh, apparently Harry's Razors, you know, these razor companies. Yeah. Uh, that are all coming out now. Um, yeah. Well, apparently they, they disrespected the daily com. Oh yeah. They disrespected them. And last year they canceled all their advertising saying that they had a misalignment of values. Oh, uh, yep. Know what that means. Because we don't want to sell razors to conservative thinking people. We don't want to sell razors to people who use their brains and engage in, in rational, thoughtful behavior. We only want to sell our ra- razors to reactionary imbeciles. So, yeah. So anyway, Daily Wire is like, all right, fine. So they they hooked up with a company called Jeremy's Razors. <laughs> Too many razor companies. And uh, then Jeremy's Razors is running a a basically an F Harry Razor uh, <laughs> campaign. <laughs> it's probably some old Harry's employees. Like you know, what? screw those guys. Yeah, they're like, yeah, F those mother lovers. Yeah, so, yeah, so, whatever. I just thought that was funny. I yeah, was funny. I did not know about that. But that is funny, yeah. yeah. All right, moving on to Brownells Bullet Points. The Brownells Bullet Points of the Week brought to you by Brownells.com. That makes sense. Makes sense. Boom, ba down, bow, ba do. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. You're excited now, aren't you? You're excited now, aren't you? All right. So I'm going to ask you guys a question. I'm going to ask you a question. Do you have many old G.I. Joe magazines? Do you have aluminum, aluminum? Do you have aluminum AR-15 magazines? Yes, no, maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, if you do... If you do have those, when, do they have the old pale green or black even, uh, or some of them are gray, followers? And you say, uh, maybe? Well, if you take your little finger and uh, you poke it, does the follower tilt? You say, well, yeah, but that's never been a, this is when people say, but that's never been a problem before. <laughs> that's never been a problem before. Mm. You know, when that the older your magazines get and the more worn floor plates become, uh, the more likely that that thing is going to tilt during the firing process. You go bang, 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 and then it's going to tilt. And then your rounds are going to stop feeding. 
And then you're not going to be a happy camper because now your rounds are not feeding. So what I did, uh, I realized that. And, and the thing is, you're like, well, well, that's a G, that's a GI spec, man. Uh, I know that it's a GI spec. And, and we didn't know better. OK, there was a time uh, that we just didn't know better. And that was the thing, you know, that was that was good enough. That used to be good enough. But then we advanced, you know, in our thinking and was like, you know what? We don't have to go with good enough or that's OK or you know, we can do better. So the guys at Magpul, what the guys at Magpul did is they came up with these anti-tilt, no-tilt, non-tilt replacement followers for G.I. Joe AR-15 magazines. They're bright yellow, and they are, uh, well, if you watch the video, and, and Zach's going to share the video. We did a video. I Basically, I did how to upgrade your old G.I. Joe magazine. Yes, indeed. Uh, it's really simple. Disassembling an AR mag is not difficult. It's, it's not hard. Uh, and it's a good thing to do anyway. If you've had those magazines for a long time, you've actually used them. It's probably not a bad idea to pull the floor plate off, pull the spring out and look inside and see if there's sand and grit and dirt and funk inside of it. Um, wipe off the spring with a rag, you know, kind of give it a little stretchy, stretchy, wipe it off with a, with a rag. Uh, and if there's grit or whatever, take a rag and put it on a stick and run it in and out or whatever. Or they have special brushes. You can do that. So the, I did that, and there's one other item from Brownells that you can get, and it's called an AR-15 M16 lip magazine lip gauge. Now, for those of you that don't know and haven't spent a lot of time training with uh, AR-15 magazines, or maybe you just never were taught, uh, what imbeciles will do is, is they will take stripper clips and so forth, and they will jam their magazines into the table and, and or into, you know, onto objects and what have you. And with aluminum magazines, what will happen is the very top, the lips will start to spread out. And eventually you end up with double feeds. You end up with failures to feed. Or you end up with, the most common thing is you'll get double feeds. You get two rounds will jump up and try and get into the chamber at one time. And with the lip gauge, it's super simple. It's go, no go. And I, I, I demonstrated in the video uh, how to use it. So step number one, and also you want to, if you're going to do that, you either want to disassemble the magazine or you want to take your finger and push the follower down so there's no tension against the go, no go gauge. And you set it on there and slowly press it down. And if it drops all the way down into the magazine, that's no go. The lips are spread too far. Uh, but if it just drops down like a quarter or a third of the way or whatever and stops, then you're good to go. So, and you say, wow, I don't, I don't need all that. Well, okay, it's fine. You don't need all that. But uh, if you've got, now I don't, I don't like to throw away magazines, you know, but if a magazine is out of spec, if a mag's out of spec, if the lips are out of spec, you, you got one of two choices, either throw it away uh, or strip it apart and use it as a training tool. Just use it as a demonstrator or a training tool or something like that. Um, and if you're an instructor, you should have that kind of stuff anyway. You should have trainer mags, you know, that, that you pulled the guts out of or whatever, and you just use them as demo tools in the classroom. Uh, but if, you're, if the aluminum body is still good and the spring is still good, but you've got one of those basically crappy, worn out green followers, and and let me tell you what it's it's kind of eye opening if you've never done it with one of these green followers you take your finger and you put it in the front and you just poke it down and the thing goes and it sticks you're like oh that would probably be bad if I needed that magazine to work and I was halfway through and that happened and stopped working it doesn't happen all the time but it, it does happen uh, just throw that crap away man. <laughs> The uh, the 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 Brownells uh, or the I'm sorry the Magpul followers they come in a three pack for like five bucks. Can you afford five bucks to upgrade your magazines? 
I can't afford five bucks to upgrade my magazines. Well, then don't. I don't care. Uh, or just buy PMAGs. <laughs> PMAGs are built with anti-tilt followers. Um, that's why the Marine Corps loves them. But if you've got a, but if you got a bunch of GI Joe mags and you've had them for a while, uh, and they've got those old, worn out, you know, green or I have a couple that are black. Generally, the the mil spec is green. It's that pale green color, you know. Uh, but I have a couple that are black, and and I pushed on them, and they and they stuck. And they're like, okay, that's not good. That's not good. So, uh, do yourself a favor, upgrade your magazines uh, if you got them. Uh, like I said, it cost you. It's going to cost you five dollars and ninety five cents for a three pack. I, I don't know if if uh, I'm guessing they sell them on the Magpul website, but I know you can get them from Brownells dot com. So, and this is Brownells bullet points. So it makes sense. And if you are a, a person who's really genuinely serious about your firearms, if you're genuinely serious about firearms and you maybe have more than one gun, wink, wink, nod. Uh, it might be a good investment to to buy. But if you're if you are an armorer, uh, you absolutely should have things like chamber gauges and so forth. And this lip gauges, it's super simple. It's a very quick way to know whether or not you know your stuff is good. Oh, I, I did go to I went to magpole.com and they do offer them as either olive drab green or yellow. So you can get olive drab green ones for people who are like, I don't want a yellow follower because the yellow is too bright and the enemy will see it. That's when Zach goes, but it's inside of your magazine. The enemy can't see inside of your magazine. If the enemy can see inside of your magazine, the fight's probably over anyway. Yeah, you're probably going to die. So, <laughs> uh, And they do. They have 556 five, uh, molded, the, word, the, the number 556 five, molded into them. So that's something you might want to consider. So if you've never considered that before, you are welcome. All right, now it's time for me to be quiet and let Zach talk. ShopSOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the pimp hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. Yes, indeed, that is what you should do. You should do that. And uh, after you do that, you'll be a happy camper and have everything you want, right? All right, all right, all right. It is time. What time is it? Is it time to get ill? It's time to get. Uh, all right. For some Where reason, every time you, you say this, I keep thinking it's getting kind of hectic. But there's not even the word "time" in there. No, that's it's getting, it's getting, I, it's getting. Like the crack of the whip, I snap attack front to back in this thing called rap. All right, this is uh, one that Zach's going to read this. This is uh, just happened, or actually, um, this this news story came out, and I thought, well, it's just about that time. It's going to start getting warm, and people are going to start going out onto the water again, and, and you know, doing that kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and give it a let's give it a whirl this story is from nbcnews.com rescuer what did the rescuer do zach rescuer acted in self-defense when he shot south carolina man who fell into lake prosecutors say that's kind of all right that's a weird title you're like so the guy fell in the lake and the dude was like blam 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 it's it's a little bit more involved than that. <laughs> this is a story a from March twentieth, twenty twenty two. So this just happened by Callan Rosenblatt. Charges right. will not be filed against a South Carolina man who fatally shot a jet skier he initially tried to rescue or prosecutor rescue rescuer Re or rescue rescue not rescue prosecutors say two jet skiers a man and a woman fell into Lake Kiowa in Salem, North, South Carolina. On Tuesday, and were rescued by a man and a woman on a pontoon boat. The Akani 
County Sheriff's Office said in a news release. Officials have not released the identities of the couple on the boat or the woman in the water. The dead jet skier is Nathan Drew Morgan, officials said in a statement. The jet skiers were not wearing life vests when they fell into the water, prompting the pair on the pontoon boat to step in and help, officials said. As the pair were rescued, the jet ski continued to drive in circles in the water. Because that's what they do. They're programmed to hit hard left and they just drift in circles. Why wouldn't they just be programmed to stop? Well, they you do. Th- there are kill switches on some of them. Uh, they have lanyards, but most people disconnect it because they don't want that. But there are jet skis that have kill switches and lanyard poles so that if you fall off, that it, it kills it. Like on a treadmill uh, or whatever. Right. Uh, but have you ever used the, the, the kill switch on a treadmill? No. It's there, and I've never used it. No, I've used I've, it. I've accidentally, accidentally knocked the it. magnet off while I was in the middle of tre- treadmilling and, <laughs> and came to a complete stop. But, uh, yeah, so. Should I continue? Yeah. So that that just just as a that was a point of contention. That's for you, those of you not familiar with jet ski and ski doos and stuff like that. That's what they do. They kind of they drift to the left and make big circles, or maybe they drift to the right. I don't know. One direction. All right. Once on the once on the pontoon boat, Morgan became agitated, quote, and began assaulting the couple on the pontoon. Unquote. The release says. Officials said it is believed Morgan wanted to return to the watercraft would continue driving through the water with no one aboard. Uh-huh. To, de- to de-escalate the situation, the rescued woman pushed Morgan into the water, authorities said. Wow. After he- what a... This is a this, I can see this F show playing out in my head here. F show? This cl- yeah. Uh, to de-escalate UCK. the situation... No, I, I normally think S show. Yeah. Yeah, or S-H-I-T show, but yeah. The choice of word confused me. Anyway, to de-escalate the situation, the rescued woman pushed Morgan into the water, authority said. Stop it. After he brought Morgan back into onto the pontoon boat a second time, the man on the boat shot him, fearing for the safety of those on board. That is suspect. So he's like, all right, are you calm? You know, and he like and he helps him back up onto the boat and the dudes attacks him. Um, uh, Morgan died on the platoon boat after they reviewed the evidence of the shooting. Prosecutors ruled that the shooting a case of self defense and said they would not press charges. So, and and the people on the pontoon boat were were like retirees. Uh, I, I in another story, I I saw that the that the the, uh, that the the man and the, the the husband and wife they were driving around on the pontoon boat because who drives around on pontoon boats? Elderly people just chill. Older people, right? Yeah, because yeah, because that's what that's the time in your life when you just want to relax. Just you don't need to drink. jet ski and go fast. Yeah. You just want to relax, right? So th- this this young stupid mongoloid attacks this old guy who, who and the old guy shot him, and so Morgan Drew, Nathan Drew Morgan. He's got all these first names. Morgan Drew Nathan. Never trust um, somebody with two first names. Yeah, that's right. Um, Drew Morgan Nathan uh, is now room temperature because Drew Morgan Nathan is is a, a freaking retard or was a freaking retard. Uh, uh, didn't know how to behave himself in public. Honestly, it, uh, it's it's this line that confuses me. The rescued one pushed Morgan into the water. After he brought Morgan back onto the boat the second time, the man on the boat shot him. Yeah. So that that sounds like he reached down, pulled him in the boat, put the bu- put and a bullet. Blam! <laughs> That's what it sounds like. <laughs> like a cowboy is like, yeah. give me your hand. Pow! Yeah. No. I, I feel I'm, like there I'm, should be another line in there that's like he pulled him into the boat, but Morgan's aggression continued. And yeah. And he got yeah. shot. Because mm-hmm. right now it just sounds like he pulled a wet man into the boat and shot him. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's why I'm a little confused here. Well, you know, because they know that that ninety eight percent of the people aren't going to read to the end of the story anyway, so why put effort into it? Yeah, <laughs> why put effort into it? But this brings me to the uh, dangerous on demand, student of the gun homeroom part. Is do you carry on the water? Well, no, I'm not crazy and paranoid like you. If you're in the you're south not? and you don't carry on the water, you're an insane person. Yeah. Um, so let's just say that you're on the water on your boat, sailboat, pontoon boat, whatever, 
and a deadly force situation occurs. You have your phone. You're going to call 911. Are the, are the cops going to drive out onto the lake to rescue you? I mean, they do have boats, right? Yeah. I mean, they'll call the guy, and then an hour later, the boat will be where you are. The, the, and the idea that people are like, I wouldn't do I'm not stupid and paranoid like you. I don't think I need a gun everywhere. But it's a good thing this guy did. Um, otherwise, he probably would have had his head beat in. He had his old wife with him. And then the woman who obviously couldn't get her boyfriend to calm down. Um, so, yeah. And that goes, this actually goes all the way back to, all the way back to a half an hour ago <laughs> when we talked about dirt coating your carry gun. Yeah. Do you dirt coat your carry gun? Why would I want to do that? Because I carried it on my platoon boat, my pontoon boat, and I don't want it to rust. There you go. Or um, say it's in the shower. Yeah, or if it's in the shower. I guess you're not carrying in the shower, but I, I just no, yeah, no, I made no. a short of the shower gun video the other day, so it's on my mind. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, you don't know. The whole reason we carry, it's like, why do you have a fire extinguisher in your car, in your kitchen, whatever? Because you're planning on having a fire? Because you're dangerous and reckless with fire? No, I'm not very. Because you don't know. You can't control the unknown. That's why we carry guns. Because I can't control. I can control me, but I can't control the actions of the humans that I'm going to encounter the moment I step out of my front door. I have no idea. And, uh, you know, the. I've got a lot to say about the regurgitated um, garbage. We've got people in our audience. We've got people in our community that like to regurgitate nonsense uh, dis and disguised as wisdom. Like, yeah, the uh, the the you win every fight you don't get into. All right. The best way to win a fight is not to be in one. Okay. Thanks for telling me that there, uh, Copernicus, Socrates, Plato. Thanks for that wisdom, Plato. But what am I supposed to do when I'm on my pontoon boat and I'm a good Samaritan and I pull the guy up on the boat and he goes schizo on me and attacks me? Is Should I jump off the boat and swim away? Leave my wife behind and say, you're on your own, honey. Well, no, in that, in that case, you should actually do something. Ah, I should do something then. But but I guess I'm wrong because I didn't avoid the fight. No, that's not what we're saying at all. We're saying don't look for a fight. So you're telling me that someone who's responsible enough to go into their own pocket, 500 to a thousand dollars, and take oh, you know three days to participate in professional training that person is so is that's the irresponsible person that goes around looking for fights is that that the mindset and mentality of a person who's an irresponsible moron who would go around trying to pick fights with people well no well well then what are you saying well i don't know but it sounded good so i just kept saying it it sounds good, so we just keep regurgitating it. You see, kids, regurgitated nonsense doesn't become wisdom because it's said all the, often enough or continuously. The idea that you'd have to tell someone, well, you know, don't get in, don't unnecessarily get into fights. Really? Because I was going to. I was going to, I was going to leave here and go punch a dude at the gas station. That's what I was going to do. But you stopped me with your words of wisdom, Copernicus. That's like billboards that, that encourage you to change your behavior. Don't beat your wife. I was going to beat my wife, but then I saw a billboard that said it was wrong. I was like, you know, right before I punched her, I was like, I remember that billboard I saw the other day. And it said, punching your wife is wrong. So I'm not going to. Thank you, Billboard. 
given some, <laughs> you're like, wow, you're kind of a, a, a butt, Paul. Yeah, I am kind of a butt because I've been around for, I've been paying attention to this, this genre for a long time. You like that, Zach? Yeah, Zach likes it when I use the word Jenner. Jen Ray. Because for some reason he thinks it's just like so hoity pretentious. Hoity and pretentious. It's so pre- the only it's people not. that say genre are pretentious people. The only people who say genre That's like, is everyone. No. It's like people who say uh eclectic. I don't if, even if, know. If, if you means. know what someone who who peppers their their conversations with the word eclectic, if they've said it more than once in their life, they're arrogant. They're pretentious. But the genre that's like in the mod- in the modern era of like television and stuff, everyone uses the term genre. Genre. That is the that is the epitome of hyperbole. And you know it. <laughs> I don't know it. I don't. Know it. I know that you for some reason have the this epitome of hyperbole against the word genre. And, and people who have never it. seen Brian Regan, they're like is he trying to say epitome of hyperbole? No, it's the epitome of hyperbole. <laughs> oh, here's what we're going to do right now. So here's the deal. Carry your freaking gun. Even with you on the water. Well, what if it gets wet? Dry it off. If, if Here's a, a helpful hint for you guys. If you have an EDC gun, and that's another one, EDC. That's that has become the Instagram. If you go to Instagram and hashtag EDC, there's like 1.8 million. It's the new tactical. Yeah, it's the new. It's exactly. It's the new word hashtag tactical. Um, if your concealed carry gun goes for a swim, it's not going to die. It's not like it's not made of paper mache. You know what you have to do is when, when you're back on dry land disassemble it Clean dry it, it out quick, yeah oil it put it back together what what disassemble it clean it put it back together oil it what that's yeah a lot of effort. that's a lot of effort that's more effort than i'm willing to put in it's not like the springs and the parts are made out of cardboard or whatever. If it goes in the water, it's going to melt. Just and it'll still work. It, it'll it. But if you leave the residual water on it for weeks on end, it'll, yeah, it'll rust. Um, so that maybe that's a good time to clean your gun. I don't know exactly. I don't know. Now hashtag ammo. If you're carrying cheap practice ammo that doesn't have. Do you know why the manufacturers put that red, purple, blue ring around the primer? For fun? That's that's called a sealant. Yeah. That's a primer seal to keep moisture from getting into the primer and ruining it. What? I know. I just blew your mind away, right? Uh, and the only am- the ammo that doesn't have that is the ammo that's like the cheapest manufactured in the world, right? Duty ammo and military grade ammo all has sealed primers to keep moisture out of the primer pocket so the primer doesn't go bad. Yeah, but if you drop a gun in water, the ammo automatically stops working. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Are you your ammo made out of cardboard and paper? <laughs> Zach, didn't we last summer? What did we do? We did the. the the drop test, the dr- the dunk oh, test, yeah. yeah, where we With took the, Glock 17, test, fully yeah. loaded, threw it in a bucket of water, pulled it out, shot it, mm-hmm. then did it again, pulled it out, shot it, did it again, pulled it yep. out, shot it, did it again. All the ammo went bang, 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 because it's sealed. It has sealed primers. Because it works. Because it's good factory ammo, right? So carry your gun, even if you're on the water, Like, but it, it's difficult. It's hard. I'll have to find a different way to do it and figure it out. Okay, so uh, here's the deal. In case you haven't been paying attention to the world that's around us, uh, the United States economy is being destroyed. It's being destroyed on purpose. 
And I know this is not going to make some people happy for me to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. The reason that that Joe Biden was installed as the as the fake president of the United States, his job is to destroy the American economy. That's his job. That's why he's there. His job is to break America down. Destroy the supply chains, create inflation, create frustration. Price of gas goes up. Price of homes go up. People are unemployed. Uh, inflation because we just handed out a bunch of free money to people so they wouldn't work. We destroyed a bunch of businesses, but they were like, well, I know we destroyed these businesses, but we're going to make we're going to give you government checks. That's going to make up for it. Like, where am I supposed to spend this money at? You, you put half of my favorite businesses out of work. Well, buy Amazon stuff. That's a solution. Ladies and gentlemen, if you and don't listen to me, don't listen to me. Listen to the people that that Glenn Beck interviews. Listen to the people that Joe Rogan interviews. Listen to the people that Russell. I am so crazy impressed, but I, I thought I was done with Russell Brand. Like I said, that dude, like a few years ago, he was off the rails, you know, Bush is stupid and conservatives are stupid and Americans are dumb redneck gun owners and, and they're all racist homophobes, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, I'm done with you. I'm done with your dumbass. And then apparently he got sober and started paying attention to the world. And he's like, whoa, there's a bunch of crap going on. There's a bunch of chicanery. And I should use my microphone to talk about it. And he is. Oh, and it's and it's not even those people. They're, they're people who have come from North Korea, people who've come from China, people who've come from former communist, you know, currently communist nations, and they escaped and got out. And they're they're warning us. They're like, hey, this is what they're doing where I used to live and I escaped. And now they're trying to do it here. So story number one from NPR the the npr is and you're like why are you using them they're they're totally in the tank for democrat leftist communist socialists oh i know i know i know so uh the story is what february 2nd 2022 the u.s is considering a radical rethinking of the dollar for today's digital age yes the digital world Go ahead and give us the, the beginning here. All right. Since its establishment as the country's national currency, the dollar has undergone many updates and changes. <clears throat> Sorry. But nothing compares to the proposal being debated today. The U.S. is gingerly considering whether to adapt a digital version of its currency. Adopt, rather. Not adapt. <laughs> one better suited for today's increasingly cashless world ushering in what could be one of the dollar's most fundamental transformations. In that scenario, the U.S. would not only mint the coins and print paper bills, but also issue digital cash or a central bank digital currency, CBDC, that would be stored in apps or, quote, digital wallets on our smartphones. So so now you have to have a smartphone or a smart device to access your money. Well, it, it said that would not only mint the co- coins and print paper, but. It, it, here's the deal, Zach. You want to know the, the realism? As soon as they do this, paper money is going to go away. It's going to be worthless. Because it's not going to be, it's not going to be the dollar. It's not going to be the U.S. dollar. It'll be a central bank digital currency. And you say, well, so what? This is just like Apple Pay. This is just like Apple Pay, and it's just like Venmo, and it's just like na 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 na. Uh, yeah. Check. So this is what's NPR is run by communists. They're run by socialists. They're run by people who live in these these insulated ivory towers, who are are totally detached from the really real world. It's a vision of. Read this sentence. It's a vision of a cashless future that other countries are already embracing. 
China, for example, has unveiled the digital yuan on a trial basis. India this week said it would create a digital rupee. Okay. So, hey, NPR, I don't know if you got the memo. I don't know if they get the memorandums over at NPR, but China is communist. Communists are evil. Communism is poison to the human spirit. When you say, well, other countries are doing it. For example, look at China. Okay. What you should be saying is anything China is doing, we should run screaming in the opposite direction. You know what? What they're it's doing in China? Social credit. They're putting political dissidents in internment camps. And most of those people get murdered. You know what they're doing in China? If you're a protester, they put you on a train and you go away and no one ever sees you again. Uh Yeah. That's not a good idea. We, we this is not an endorsement for something. You're like, "Oh, well, look at China's doing it, and if they're doing it, do you know in China that the party can monitor your phone, yeah, and your emails, and your everything, and your everything? But but we're getting ahead of ourselves. So let's go to the next story from the World Economic Forums for their very own website. This isn't conspiracy. Oh, I know you weird conspiracy guys want to talk about the WEF like there's bad people, but they care about the environment and they want to save us from global warming. That's why they all got on their private jets and burned 50,000 pounds of jet fuel to fly across the world is because they want to save us from global warming. Well, but those people deserve it. They're the rich and elite and powerful. Okay. All right. So, um, what on uh, uh, this? See, this story, see, the WEF came up with it first. And then the NPR, which is just a, a uh, propaganda organ for the, the left, for the Democrats, for the socialists, then they, they regurgitated it. And what we're doing, we're being set up. This is a psyop. We're being set up to believe that this is the future. And you have to embrace the future. If you don't embrace the future, well, then you're just a Luddite. You're a Luddite or a Luddite, depending on how you want to pronounce it. All right, Jared, or Zach, so what's, uh, what's going on at the WEF? What, what, what wonderful idea do these elitist billionaires have for us? First of a kind digital, uh, first of a kind global resource for central bank digital currency and stablecoin launched. Two kinds of digital currency, central bank dig digital currency and stable coins, have caught the attention of policymakers and the private sector. These are bullet points. Mm -hmm. The way global leaders develop, coordinate, and regulate such digital currencies will have profound implications on markets, social inclusion, and privacy. Social inclusion. Why does your money, why is your money tied to social inclusion? And what, is those word, what do those words mean? Whatever they want it to mean, probably. Exactly. Whatever they want it to mean. To help that inform, is, that's mind control. Yeah. To help inform policymakers, financial institutions, digital currency issuers, and others of the key risks and benefits of digital currencies, the World Economic Forum partnered with 85 organizations from around the world. This place, they, they're so evil. They produced a state-of-the-art government resource for leaders to fast assess and evaluate key policy and regulatory actions. All right. Geneva, Switzerland. Nine, uh, November 19th, 2021. A new digital currency resource suite aims to help leaders and uh, better understand and action new policies and regulations around the rapidly evolving topics of central bank digital currency and stable coins, which I'm guessing is just their version of Bitcoin. Yeah. So here's the thing. This is when we go ahead and stop and you say, okay. well, well, and this is this is how they sell this to the normies, to the idiots, to the imbeciles. This is how they sell this to the idiots who've had three, four, five shots in the last two years. Um, well, it's just like Bitcoin. You think Bitcoin's a good idea, right? 
Or it's like Apple Pay. You, Apple Pay is so convenient. It's just super convenient, right? Right. But, but at least Apple Pay comes out of my bank account. Comes out of your right? out of your actual money. My money. It just it just right? an in between for your actual money. Yeah, it's an in between. And Bitcoin is mine. I own it. It's not yours. You don't get a say. And see, that's why the government hates Bitcoin. They hate it. They hate crypto because they can't control it. When they say the word central bank digital currency, you see, Bitcoin is decentralized. That means that Uncle Sam or Uncle Klaus uh, or Uncle Xi Jinping, the Winnie the Pooh, can't put their hands on it. And they hate that. But with a central bank currency, that means one centralized bank gets to distribute, monitor, organize, and control all of these new republic credits, whatever you call them. You see, the World Economic Forum, when the NPR, they're like, oh, it's just a CBDC. It's, it's just like a dollar. It's just like, it's just like using a credit card. No, it's not. So, talking about this on Joe just now, I remembered. Hey, Canada, right? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, they're they're cracking down. Uh, Canada's seizure of crypto from convoy highlights digital currencies' flaws. Uh, Binance promises to increase efforts to apply, to comply with Canadian regulations. It's committed to ceasing crypto trading services in Ontario. Because I was about to ask, has, they can't control it. has Canada made Bitcoin illegal yet? <laughs> and the answer is they're working on it. Um, so the world decided that not just Vladimir Putin, but all of Russia is bad. So what did they do? They shut down Apple Pay in Russia. Google Pay and Apple Pay have stopped working for customers with with uh, customers tied to Russian banks. So you can't use your Apple Pay and your Google Pay if you're a Russian citizen. So if you're just like a dude or a chick walking around downtown Moscow trying to buy your, you know, Lenin Bucks coffee or whatever, your, your Stalin Bucks coffee, and you want to use your little phone to pay, boop, sorry, turned off. Not allowed to do that. Yeah, but it's my money. Doesn't matter. Go to the last one, Zach. The last story or like the last paragraph of the last story? Last story. Okay. Business Insider. All right. China's... up. Oh, get off my screen. Yeah. Ch- uh, China's social credit system ranks citizens and punishes them with throttled internet speeds and flight bans if the Communist Party deems them untrustworthy. Okay. So look at... T- what's the dateline on this? Dateline, uh, December 24th, 2021. Okay, so this story from Business Insider was done. It was public, and they're not the first one. No. I actually saw a just basically a cell phone video where a guy had escaped from communist China, and he he looked at the guy, and he's like, this is what's happening in China. The digital currency means that the CCP controls everything you can buy or can't buy. They monitor your, they give you a social credit score, which means, are you following the narrative? Are you saying what the state wants you to say? The reason I asked you for the dateline is because this was December 24th, 2021, the day before Christmas, right? Mm -hmm. So the NPR story where they said, well, this is an idea whose time has come and other countries are doing it. For example, China. That story was from February 6th. Yeah. So to be fair, the, the Chinese, business. I'll say the social credit thing has been around since like early, since the mid 20s. Right. The 19, uh, 2000s, rather. Right. So my point is this. the You're telling me that David Gura, the business writer for NPR, is not aware of how the C- Chinese Communist Party 
is using this digital currency to control its people down to the like this this is 1984 okay if if orwell could have anticipated this but nowhere in here does it say this is super dangerous because the chinese communist party can monitor every single thing you own and oh because it's a central bank they can just decide there's a shortage on whatever rice apple iphones uh, what you, you, whatever so if the central bank decides that people are hoarding fill in the blank canned food rice corn medicine whatever your money you see and this is this was pointed out by uh on rogan it was pointed out on rogan's show by the british the british dissident uh he's not dissident he's a former he was a former muslim terrorist and he's converted now um <clears throat> majid nawaz he said cd central bank not decentralized but central means one control so they can decide and they're already doing this in china oh you posted something you had an email between you and a friend where you were critical of winnie the pooh you were critical of xi jinping you have just become an untrustworthy person you are not allowed to buy a plane ticket yeah but it's my money no it's not it's not your money it's money that we allow you to use. And Adam Curry, when he was on uh, with, he was on with Rogan and he was also on with Glenn Beck, said the digital currency is programmable, which is a computer program. That's all it is. It's, it's a computer program. You're like, no, it's like a, a Bitcoin. What is a Bitcoin? It's code, right? It's computer code. It, you can't hold it in your hand. It's not real. So let's let's just say what, what is one of the favorite things, Zach, of the of the left, when when people are there's a crisis and they 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 attack people for doing what hoarding hoarding, and they and it's that's a psyop because they don't want people having all their food, water needs, fuel, so that they can be independent humans. You need to be you need to be uh, basically a drone. And because, wait, if you have your own food, you grow your own food, you have a stockpile of food, you have water, you know, well, whatever, you're off grid. Do you remember, and, and we haven't brought it up lately because they kind of went under the radar with it. During the reign of Comrade Barry Sotero, there were cities that were suing property owners for being off grid, for not using the city power. What are you talking? You're like, this, that's insane. No, there were actually people, the cities took them to court and the court ordered them to hook into the city power grid. Now you'd think in a green world where everybody's like, go green and, and save the earth, that they would in, applaud that. They're like, that's great. That's fan. We wish more people were like you. Oh, no, no, no. You see, because if you are doing it on your own and you don't need anybody else's help, we can't control you. It's all about control. People were being fined. There were judges in the United States of America fining property owners for not being on the state approved electrical grid. Look it up. It's there. We've had stories from NPR and you know, that the truth is NPR and NBC and ABC and CBS, they're, they're all the same. Where derp a derp hoarders, derp a derp hoarding, people hoarding this, hoarding that. So if you are the central bank, which is controlled by and an authoritarian government. These people aren't elected. You understand that, right? They're not elected. Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum were not elected by anyone. 
They elected themselves. So you come out and you do a PSYOP. You're like, oh, it's not fair. People are hoarding canned goods. And, And that's bad. So you go to the store and you try to buy a case of canned chicken. Boop. Sorry. Well, you can't pay for this. What do you mean? No, uh, you're only allowed to buy two cans, two individual cans of canned chicken. Yeah, but I I have the money. I want to just buy this case of 12. No, you're not allowed. It doesn't matter how much you kick or scream or jump up and down. It's not going to work. It won't ring up. You're not allowed to buy it. What do you mean I'm not allowed to buy it? Because CBD is programmable. CBDB, CBDC is programmable. Let's say that the government decides that eating meat is bad. Yeah, who, who told them they get to decide that? They told them they get to decide that. Eating meat is bad. You shouldn't be eating red meat. Okay. So you go to Burger King and you try and buy a Whopper, a real Whopper made out of ground up cow. Boop, doesn't work. Well, you already bought, you already went to Burger King once this month and now you're not allowed. You're like, that's crazy, Paul. It's already happening in China. They And you're like, well, that's just China. China has a billion people. China is the test bed. And you say, all right, what does this have to do with student of the gun? I'm going to tell you. You're worried about, well, this, they've got this bill for pistol braces and this bill for magazines and this bill for assault weapons and this bill for this and this bill for that. Imagine if you were the federal government run by Joe Biden, well, run by the minions who are puppeting Joe Biden. And and you can't, you just can't get these darned senators and congressmen to go along with your assault weapons ban. You can't do it. But you just forced everyone in America because you see, Zach, when they do this, it'll you'll be forced. It will not be participatory. You will And what they will do is they will tell your bank that they will give you X number of Republic credits for the money that you have. Six on the dollar or one on the dollar or whatever. One to one, you know, you get six Republic credits for every 10 of your American dollars. And you will have to buy everything with your digital currency. So you're you're Joe Biden and you're the administration and you've decided that no one needs an assault rifle to hunt deer. No one needs that much ammo. Do you understand that they don't need more gun control laws once they control your money? Because you won't be able to use your magic CBDC credits to buy guns. Because they've decided that guns are bad. They've decided you're an ammo hoarder. You're not allowed to buy that. This is, and you say, yeah, but guns are legal and it's protected in the Constitution. Who gives a frick? You really think that the people in Washington, D.C. that are pushing for centralized digital currency give a rat's butt about the Constitution? I got a question for you guys. Is your money your property? Is money property? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Zach says it is. Is there fourth are there fourth amendment protections against the loss of your money of your property right fourth amendment the right of the people to be secure in their persons papers houses and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures so if you have your money and it's your property 
per T and you own it. But the government comes along and says, here's what we're going to do. Yeah, I know you, you you think in your mind that the U.S. dollars you have are they that you own them. But what we did is we went into that room over there. Um, and because we own all elections now. And you're not going to fight us on it. We, we proved it in 2020. We proved that we can steal an election and and you'll say, well, I don't want to be considered crazy. I don't want to be considered a kook, so I'll just let them do it. We went into that room and we all voted that we're going to switch the, F the Federal Reserve, which is not a government company, it's a private company. They just use the word federal to trick you into believing that. Uh, we're no longer going to honor that old paper debt. You know, that's, that's old. It doesn't work in a digital age. This is the new world order. Yesterday, I don't know if, if it was a slip, and I don't think it's a slip because everything that comes out of the puppet's mouth is scripted. There are people in the background scripting everything that comes out of that imbecile's mouth. He said new world order. That's bad. Are we at the point in, that in the United States of America most of the people don't realize that new world order is bad when when the was it wcw the stable the yes. nwo yeah nwo was okay. a wcw thing okay the reason that they did that Rest in peace, Scott Hall. was because they were heels they were villains they were bad guys they dressed in black hogan reversed his freaking stash he did a facial hair reversal. You know, they did that because they were villains, because people understood, well, NWO, New World Order, is a bad thing. It's like Spectre, okay? So Biden says, we have an opportunity to, to move forward into the New World Order. And this, like, whoa! The fact that every congressman and senator didn't wake up today go to the floor and put forward a bill to censure the president of the United States and say, I don't know what this guy is smoking, what brand of crack they've got this guy on, but New World Order is not representative republic. That's not constitutional republic. Kids, you have to understand that a centralized digital banking currency is the end of the Bill of Rights. Not just the Second Amendment. It is the end of the Bill of Rights. You say things, you, you speak your mind on whatever socialist media or emails, you think your Gmail is secure? If you think your Gmail is secure, I've got a, I got a trick for you guys. Go into your Gmail and write a letter to a friend of yours and insert something that you would never, ever, ever talk about. Let's say you live in the city and you would never talk about horseback riding or equine or saddles or tack or whatever. I want you to try this. Go into your Gmail or your Yahoo mail if, if you're from you know 1992. Um, go in there and write an email to a friend and in the title bar, put something that you would never talk about. I don't get pick something like horse tack or equine or, you know, carrot soup recipes or whatever. Put that in the in the tagline, put it in the subject bar and then in there say, hey, I've been looking for good deals on saddles or whatever. Do that. Send it and then watch your social media and wait and see how long it takes before you get push ads for horse tack and veterinary supplies. Wait. Or, you know, carrots or whatever. Something you would never talk about. Let's say you don't own a cat. You never owned a cat. You don't own a cat. Put in the subject bar cat supplies or cat treats or whatever. Send it and count down and see how long it is before you start getting 
ads on Facebook, Instagram, in your spam box for that thing. If you think that you can write between your friends and criticize the government and they're not going to find out about that, what is going on in China right now? If you do anything of which the Chinese Communist Party does not approve, they just shut off your money. They literally will starve you to death. You will have no money. And it's not like you can just like, go somewhere else. You're like, oh, I'll just, I'll just get off that and I'll go somewhere else and use this. No, you can't. You're not allowed. People in China punished it, the, the uh, guy who had escaped communist China. He said they have uh, can't traffic cameras and facial recognition. And if the camera says that you violated a traffic law, they fine you and take the money out of your account. No trial, no right to face your accuser. The camera says you did it. We took the money out of your account and you can suck it because there is no recourse. What are you going to do? Sue the Chinese Communist Party? Kids, we're all worried about this gun control, that gun control or whatever. It's going to be meaningless. And somebody said to me, they said, yeah, but the majority of Americans won't go for this. I said, really? I said, I was just out yesterday and I saw people driving with masks on in their cars two and a half years after the beginning of this. You think those people won't jump on board with that? Those people are brainwashed mongoloids. You see people like it, it gets it dwindles now. For instance, we're in Wyoming where there's never been a mask mandate. And this weekend we went into uh, we drove into Rollins to get supplies. We're in the store. There, there's no mat. Like I said, there's no mandate. There's no requirement. And, and, and you can't make me do anything anyway. There's people walking around in the store with their masks on still today. Two days ago, three days ago, you think those imbeciles have not been brainwashed to do what they're told? Those people will think that this is great. They will, they will bow down. The, the, and you don't think that the newspaper and the media, the propaganda organs are going to sell this as the, they're creating a problem. They're setting, they set the Reichstag on fire. They, the government created the inflation problem. The government used COVID to destroy the economy. They're using the Ukraine crisis to destroy the economy. And then they're going to step in and say, we can fix it. We just need all of you to get on board with this new central bank digital currency. And that will fix the problem. You mean the problem that you created? Yeah. We wouldn't have a problem if it wasn't for your government interference in our lives. Yeah, but Klaus Schwab wants everybody to be on this, so you have to do it. And we're everybody in the government is down with the Schwab, so you peasants just need to shut up and do it. You say, yeah, but guns are legal and ammo is legal and it's my constitutional right to buy as many guns and ammo as I want. Not when your digital pay won't work. Hey, Zach, can you go to eBay today and buy a full capacity, standard capacity AR-15 magazine? The answer is no. Why? Because eBay, as a company, decided that even though those are, well, technically legal, we don't think they're right, and you shouldn't have them. So you're not allowed to buy, sell, or trade in legal things on our site. Uh, 
I actually don't see any magazines whatsoever. Hmm. I mean, there, there's magazine magazines like Paper and Ink. Yeah, I, yeah. Through, but my point is this: we're already in a position social inclusion. Your social credit score. So it doesn't matter what's legal and what's not legal. And, you know, you're like, I'm allowed because it's legal. If somebody has decided that they don't like that. We have banks that have shut down the 2A community because they don't like guns. So we're not we're going to close your account. You can't do business with us. We're going to cancel you. Get used to the word, you, you, the word cancel. The central digital banking currency is the ultimate. It is the, it is the mule of cancellation. It is the Thor's hammer of cancellation. The minute you allow this to happen, you will buy nothing that Washington DC does not approve of, of which they do not approve, which will include guns and ammo. And anything else, red meat, whatever. Now, you'll be able to buy pot. You'll be able to buy dope because we need to keep the people doped up so that they just do what we tell them. We want them doped up. We want as many people doped up as often as possible. We sure as heck fire don't want them to sit down and engage in thoughtful, reasonable thinking. So you're, you're concerned about the latest ATF, whatever? That's child's play compared to this. All right, we got a couple questions. Uh, have you seen those lasers that can remove dots, lots of rust? Uh, Do you know no. the rust removal? Basically what it is is you take the little thing. It, it's like a laser printer, except not really, where you take the thing, you put it under there, and it just kind of goes burnt, burnt 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 and just just takes off basically whatever's on top so you can just strip off all the rust on a whatever pretty quickly yeah. but then you're but once you do that you're back down to bare metal well yeah but that's better than having rusty falling apart metal than you paint it or whatever right well you mean you can use you can use oil and a brush and get the rust off but i get you um any maritime law requiring boaters to render aid uh yeah generally I know international law, it's kind of one of those, if you can render aid without putting yourself in danger, you are obliged to do so. Now, you never have to put yourself in danger right, to render aid. Yeah. You know, if you can say, well, look, I, I, you know, if we try and it's kind of like the building's on fire and if I run in, I'll die too. Yeah. Or that guy's laying on an electric line. And if I grab him, I'm going to fry too. Yeah. Um, you know, that kind of a thing. Oh, uh, so, but yeah, as far as maritime law, uh, but when you say maritime, you're not talking about lakes in Minnesota. You're talking about oceans and stuff like that. Um, well, I mean, we're, we're talking about bodies of water. So, you know, six, one half dozen, the other in terms of just like yeah. curiosity of the question. But yes, but the answer is yes. Um, you if in unless you can you know if if you can render aid without endangering your vessel and crew uh you are obliged to yeah. render aid so oh there we go that that's why the starship enterprise is floating around rescuing people and stuff like that yeah plus they're the good guys and if they don't go around rescuing people then the half of the episodes wouldn't happen uh, that's right yeah that's right that's right so uh did that full did that fulfill our uh, our uh, Time obligation? Yeah. I do believe so. Yes. Oh, and I don't, uh, one I'm not trying thing. to bring you guys down, but you've got to understand. Yeah. This is a this we're at war. This is a real threat. They're attempting to take your property away from you and replace it with a privilege. Yeah. That's dis, digital currency will be a privilege. Yeah. End of story. And one last thing, because I, I looked it up while you were talking. I Googled, uh, and yes, I use Google intentionally, uh, <laughs> the uh, the phrase Joe Biden New World Order. And mm -hmm. all of the stories are talking about crazy whack job conspiracy theorists and Q QAnon believers getting on this. 
all no, of the he, stories actually are about, there's a daily wire story he yeah. he said it in a speech no no, no. Uh, like it's why the, it's like oh these crazy conspiracy theorists and qa on believers why they are upset about this it, it's immediately trying to frame it as this is whack job bull yeah if, if you don't approve of that you're a crazy person yeah um if if you don't approve, if you don't if you read the Constitution of the United States of America, and you understand that we are a constitutional republic, an independent constitutional republic, not beholden to Europe or Asia or anyone else, we're supposed to have our own money. Yeah. The only reason our own money is not good anymore is because we've allowed the government to ruin it through their interference and malfeasance. If you well, and the thing is, if you if if you're listening to me and you don't understand that the re, and you're like, if you're a Democrat, why in the name of all this holy would you support Joe Biden? Other than he has a D behind his name. If it's D, let it be. That, that's what I've been this, saying since it, I started. You know, that, that's the thing with, um, you know, modern liberals. Hey, cat. Modern liberals, they're like, we want inclusion and we want fresh ideas and we want this and we want that. We want minority inclusion and women. And, and so your your solution is to vote for a oh, old white, white guy who's been in politics for 40 years that that's your that's your new inclusive way of living there you go there we go there you go oh garbage panda close enough yeah dumpster cookie dumpster uh, cookie so let, let's end on a positive note which is from Doug Arnold he says uh, Indiana Governor Holcomb signed a constitutional carry into law last night. We had oh. to force it, but it takes effect in July. Yeah, that, I can't figure that out. Like, so when they want to take something away from you, when they want to take your rights or curtail your rights, they sign their name on a piece of paper and they're like, effective now. And then when they, when they, you know, the, the constitutional carry bill, all that says is, is we're actually going to acknowledge, we're going to go back to acknowledging the Constitution's existence. Um, the well, the what, Bill what of Rights is, is already a thing. Is it gives them a couple months to backpedal and find a way out of it? No, I, you know, the Bill of Rights is already a thing. We don't need, and that's that's the insane. We live in, in crazy. We live in crazy world. Can you imagine if they decided we need to pass a law affirming? freedom of speech you're like yeah but that already exists yeah but we need to we indiana needs to pass a a, a a law saying that people actually are allowed to engage in free speech without censorship I'm not surprised we're not already there or yeah and i was gonna say there. is the psycho thing is we're about there we're we're, we're governors and, and state legislatures are going to say you know the First Amendment actually means what it says, and you can't just arbitrarily censor people because you don't like what they said. Oh. You know, the Bill of Rights was written to protect the people of the United States of America from torture. Did you know that? No question mark? Well, um, I'm going to point that out in a future episode but i'm gonna tell you guys this right now if you in my listening audience are not familiar with the book the gulag archipelago if you don't even know what a Google, gulag is you are so far behind the power curve i don't even know, don't even know what to tell you now there are several versions that are out there and so it can be a little bit confusing. Uh, the the primary one, there's actually there's there's a volume one, two, and three, and each of those is literally hundreds and hundreds of pages. From what I've read so far, 
and I was aware of, I knew what a gulag was and I knew these stories. I mean, I, I knew what that was, but when I, even when I was in school, I was not required to read this. Now the gulag archipelago sold over 2 million copies in the West. That means Europe and the United States. So in the seventies and eighties, we knew what the gulag system was about what happened under the the great you know the the experiment the the grand experiment in collectivism and fairness that was the soviet union when you give communists free reign to control when you give them unlimited power when you let people have unchecked authority over their fellow citizens this is what happens there's so many, like I said, I, I've been reading uh, volume one. I bought the uh, uh, Gulag Archipelago volume one. I'm 144 pages or so into it now. The reason I say 144 is because that's when the uh, chapters change. Um, folks, what is happening in the United States today, the way the left is, is trying to control thought and speech, Political correctness and now wokeness is cultural Marxism. You need to understand that. It is cultural Marxism. It is not an accident, and it's not people just trying to be nice. It's deliberate, and it's purposeful. And it's designed to do two things, to control you and to shut you up, which could be one and the same. Control what you think. And if you don't agree, to get you to shut up and just let them do what they want. We're at a we're literally in a war for the future of the United States of America. The rest of the country, the world is pretty much f u c k e d. Um, and if the United States, the reason that Biden has to destroy America is because America is standing in the way of klaus schwab and the world economic forums great reset you the american gun owner the person who thinks for yourself the one who read the constitution and the bill of rights you're in the way they need to silence you they need to marginalize you they need to cancel you they need to shut you down because as long as you're standing there with your rifle stubborn and obstinate and refusing to go along with the program you're in the way so stay in the way keep thinking keep reading keep understanding and understand that you're not alone remember we just did that whole thing last week about community about like like-minded individuals about why you should get in the grad program because you can commune with other people who get it who can see beyond the lies that's why it's like, man, Paul, it's almost like you did that stuff on purpose. Yeah, kind of, kind of is. <laughs> it's kind of like we did that stuff on purpose. All right. Uh, tomorrow, 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 Thursday show. The bonus hour, number one, truth is not hate speech. And are you too old for strength? We'll talk about that. Uh, Jared should be back then. Uh, um, we'll talk about that in the PFT and lessons learned or leadership lessons all on Thursday's show. Zach, if someone is listening right now and they yes. they're excited and they're like, all right, all right, all right, stop trying to sell me. I'm already sold. How do I get in the grad program? You can go to get SOTG.com right now, join the grad program, get in on the trial, uh, get in all, all kinds of great stuff. For example, right now, uh, as we speak. We have a exclusive uh, early access to our newest video, the AR-15 M16 magazine upgrade, which we just talked about earlier and brought us bullet points. That's right. Upgrade. You can, you can see the early video before anyone else right now on GetSOTG.com. The there you go. Website. So GetSOTG.com and be a part of the group. All yes, right, indeed. ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, all that good stuff. Thank you very much for being with us today. I appreciate it. I want you to remember... You are a beginner once, but you're a student for life.
We appreciate your reviews. If you haven't left a review or updated yours recently, head on over to Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast player to voice your opinion. Don't forget to join us at The Student Lounge, a place for like-minded individuals to learn, connect, and support each other. No chicanery will be tolerated. Remember to check studentofthegun.com daily for new, free content and giveaways. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. Are you a social butterfly? Connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for new content each and every day at Student of the Gun. Watch Student of the Gun TV and videos from our trusted partners on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, and even AirPlay. Go to studentofthegun.com for direct links, and remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.